This morning, you're probably aware that many people believe we should seek after God. And while that is very true, did you know that God seeks after us? Well, I'll tell you about that in a minute, but first let me ask you a question. Do any of you know the price of gold these days? A single troy ounce is worth $1,640. Man, only if I had a couple ounces. I probably wouldn't be very responsible with it, and saving it wouldn't be very easy. See, I'm not as good at saving as Joseph was. I'm sure you know the story of Joseph, right? Most prized son of Jacob, a colorful robe sold by his brothers to slavery. Well, he was put in charge of Egypt as vizier to Pharaoh, a second in command. He stored up and saved bushels and bushels of grain, as well as many Egyptian and Hebrew lives during a seven-year famine. This famine drove his brothers to Egypt to buy grain from Pharaoh. When Joseph sees his brothers, they do not recognize him, and he realizes that there are only ten of them there, all excluding Benjamin. Now, at this point, Joseph starts to engage in some actions that parallel how God relentlessly seeks after us. In Genesis 42:15, Joseph, still under the guise of vizier, asks his brothers about their family. He is delighted to hear about his father and his youngest brother, Benjamin, and he requests to see him. This trust is the first of Joseph's actions to reflect one of God's. See, oftentimes, God asks for the youngest brother, not the strongest or the most knowledgeable. And we may be that brother or sister, the Christian who still feels new and fresh and timid, but has always been a son or daughter of God's. This is seen when we are called to do a service for his kingdom, even though we are not confident in our faith or ourselves. But in fact, God takes into account all of his children. Jesus states in Matthew 25, 40, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This statement puts a very high standard on those we may see as the least of us. Next, immediately after asking for Benjamin, Joseph sends them back to their father with their sacks full of grain. But they are also carrying the silver they thought they spent. See, this is where Joseph performs his sec second mirror action, giving. When his brothers get home, they find their silver had been put back. They did not know Joseph ordered his servant to give it back to them. This is a huge reflection of how God gives. Even after Joseph's brothers beat him and sold him to slavery, he gives, the, he gives them grain, free of charge. He forgave his brothers, even because they did not know what they were doing. Sound familiar? Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Christ died by the hands of his own people, yet he gives them life, free of charge. See the similarities? We cannot outgive God. And remember, all these events happened way before Christ was made an example. Finally, Joseph's brothers have convinced their father to let them bring Benjamin. When the eleven return, Joseph holds a banquet. His brothers still don't know who he is, but they begin to wonder why Benjamin's portions are five times as much as theirs. After the banquet, Joseph sends his brothers back with the grain and again their silver. But this time, he has put his silver cup in Benjamin's sack. The passing of this kingly cup is a, it reflects the passing of the gospel and God's mercy unto us. You see, now that Joseph has brought Benjamin into his kingdom, he blesses him with free grain and then passes on a valuable cup to test his trust. See, God calls for us, and when we finally listen to what he has to say, we enter his kingdom, where he gives us eternal life, free, like the grain. And then he passes his gospel on to us to test, to test our trust and our faith in him. This is our mission, Jesus tells us in Mark 13, 10, that the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Every day, we carry the king's cup to show the world that we are holding something so valuable, it is worth eternal life. Now, the value of gold I mentioned earlier does not come close to the value of eternal life. But God calls for us no matter whom we think we are. He blesses us when we don't even know it, and then he gives us a mission, along with a free gift we'd be so foolish to refuse. He truly is our shepherd, and we are his wandering sheep. He's calling for us day and night until we respond. Thank you.